Hello and welcome. I'm Gwen Edwards and this is Our Lives. When it comes to selecting a school, the right school to further your education, Connecticut does have a lot to offer. Today we're going to get an inside look at one area school of higher education, Western Connecticut State University in Danbury. Jane McBride Gates is the Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs and Jane, thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. All right, now explain the duties of Provost. The Provost is the second officer of the university following the President, Jim Smarter. I have responsibility for students from admission through graduation over all academic programs and, and other offices that support uh, academic uh, achievement and programs. Admissions, financial aid, registrar's office, from the beginning to the end. And I what think. brought you to Western Connecticut State University? I had, it was a part of my pattern for ascendancy. I'd given myself so many years. I'd served as an interim VPAA before, wanted a permanent position as provost, was um, selected in a national search, and uh, that year loved the mission of Western Connecticut State University, accepted the offer here. It was a progressive. Um, type move in my profession, in my career. Now, there are several programs at Western Connecticut State University that have received national awards, including the Military Advanced Education Top School Honors. Uh, what are some of the programs that WestCon offers to veterans? We offer primarily those programs in uh, either the criminal justice programs, but all of the programs are open to veterans. What makes us unique in having received the 2015 award was how we engage our veterans. We have an individual who does nothing but serves and facilitates the entry of veterans at the university, as well as a lounge for veterans and support services for veterans. We believe it is a moral imperative to give back to those military families who've served us so well. And there are gonna be other things you will see forthcoming within the week. I can't announce it just yet because it hasn't been formalized, but we are continuing to do more for our veterans. All right, now let's talk about return on investment for Absolutely. WestCon students. I am so excited that you asked that. Uh, Western was ranked the 11th institution in the country uh, for return of investments of our students. When we look at reducing the gap between the wealth, the poor and the rich, we find that uh, Westerns to study, tuition is low, but the return is nationally competitive. They're able to get out of school and they earn quite a bit of money. Another study that was last year that was produced showed that we ranked seventh in the state of Connecticut in terms of the return. The pay salaries that our graduates get once they leave, the, we were ranked seventh in Connecticut. And, and but that's 11th. good when yes. you have a, a Yale that's it, it, within the excellent. same state. <laughs> it is absolutely excellent. We're very focused on ensuring that we provide excellence in our programs, not only access and opportunities to our students, but that they're able in the liberal arts and the professions to be globally competitive at Western. So we offer exemplary programs in criminal justice, social work, nursing, 100% pass rates on our NCLEX, visual and performing arts, chemistry and biology, high percentage of per students who are accepted to graduate programs, to pre-med programs, social work. Uh, it's just wonderful, our elementary, uh, a new degree that's interdisciplinary, that's going to be integrated with the STEMs, which is the first in the state that will be offered. We offer numerous innovative cutting edge programs. I'm just excited to serve <laughs> as the chief academic officer because we have some great students as well. And, Our and honors speaking program, of students, do you find a lot of students from this area, Southwestern Connecticut, Greenwich to Milford, Orange, Woodbridge, all in that area come and attend Western? We see, we're beginning to see higher numbers from this, this part of the state and would love to invite others to come and look 
at the excellent programs that we provide at Western Connecticut State University. We are also entering in partnerships. For example, we offer the R and the BSN at Norwalk Community College here. Ah. We offer off-site at NVCC, at other community colleges as well, so that students will have a very a seamless type um, entry into the four-year institution from the two-year uh, degree-granting institutions. And what advice would you have for students and parents currently looking at colleges and universities? My advice would be to clearly look at the accrediting, accredited programs first, look at those programs, look at the cost, the tuition, particularly for the first degree, the baccalaureate degree, and also look at the return of investment to ensure that your son, daughters, your relatives will receive a competitive quality education. It's just, it's absolutely essential today that, that parents do that and visit, visit Western. Come visit other institutions and visit us. Now give us your love. website. We are <laughs> www.wcsu.edu, located in Danbury, Connecticut, and would love to see you there. All right, well, Jane, thank you yes. for coming. What a wealth of information, and more importantly, it is a school to consider. It is a school, and we are so competitive. Thank you. And straight ahead on our lives, a look at the resurrection of a local church. This is a story you do not want to miss. Stay with us. Caring, honesty, and respect. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Serving others is a way to live. That's what defines a hero. If everybody out there does one nice thing for everybody, it would make this world a lot better. Watch the News 12 Connecticut Hometown Hero every Wednesday evening as we bring you a local hero giving back to the community. Give me some love. And nominate your hometown hero by calling or emailing us. News 12 Connecticut, as local as local news gets. And welcome back. A full-scale effort is underway to save one of Norwalk's most extraordinary architectural landmarks. It is the former First United Methodist Church. It's located at 39 West Avenue. Members of the Macedonia Church are leading the way, and they have a very special fundraiser coming up. Jolene Green is with the Macedonia Church, and Michael McGuire is a part of Austin McGuire REA. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now, Jolene, why did Macedonia uh, take on this project? Well, we have for 36 years been uh, uh, active in the community. We were established in 1978, and we've always rented. We've been looking for a church for the past 10, 15 years. And uh, when this came on the market, uh, at first we thought, no, it might not be, it might be too much to take on. but. Um, Mike McGuire was the uh, uh, real estate broker that uh, helped us um, navigate through that process of negotiating and purchasing it. And we just said, you know, it's a beautiful church. It's like a city set on a hill. And we thought, we'll do it. We'll go for it. And, and Mike, why did you become involved? Well, it, it's kind of a long story. I had met Ray Dancy from Macedonia right. years ago when we, we do a, um, a men's retreat together, our church and their church. And at, and at the time I got speaking with Ray, he knew I was involved in real estate. So he explained to me his, um, or I should say Macedonia's original church project on Ely Avenue. And, and we have some, some pictures inside of the church as you're speaking. Okay. So the, um, but that, that, there was an old church project, but um, I'd heard about this church years ago being possibly on the market. Mm -hmm. and I had spoken to um, Macedonia at the time about it. Uh, it just kind of fell off the radar screen for about three or four years. And, and then I was brought in by the city to do some additional work. Extraordinary pictures we're looking it's at. It's gorgeous. Just beautiful inside. It's a gorgeous church house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and, and then in the process, the city notified us about doing some additional work, and I remember that, uh, you know, I just brought it to uh, raise attention again, and we were off and running. But that was about a two-year process to, uh, from the initial inquiry into um, the actual closing. Now, tell us about this fundraiser coming up on November the 18th. Yes, um, 
We realize that we need community effort. It's a huge project. There's so much work to be done. As soon as we took title in May, we started immediately with renovating a lot of um, uh, manpower from volunteers in our church, and also we're getting help with Neuroton Presbyterian. And by the way, Neuroton Presbyterian donated 200000 to our this project, but we're still at least 300000 short of finishing, mm -hmm. and maybe even more because there'll be ongoing Well, as you know, when you start to renovate, all kinds of other things yes. come up. Yes. <laughs> you just yes. kind of uncover things yes. as you go along. Yes, we have a leaking roof, which we've uh, repaired or, or at least stabilized. We had bricks uh, that were falling off, which we've uh, stabilized. So right now we're, uh, we, we put in a whole new HVAC system. There's a lot of work to be done. The stained glass windows are absolutely beautiful, but they'll need work. Um, there's still unmortared brick that needs work. There's a lot of work that still has so to go. So the community can help out by yes. coming to the fundraiser, yes. November the 18th, yes. City Hall. Yes. There's going to be a silent auction. Yes, yes. It's not like big items, but <laughs> hopefully it will stir the community to get involved. It's not just a church. It's a community effort. It's been a, it was on, put on the historic register in 2012, so it is a historic, state historic uh, uh, site. And we just want to maintain the integrity of the building. It's going to take a lot of work. We've, we've uh, uh, engaged the services of Gill & Gill Architects to help us do this. At the fundraising dinner on Tuesday, November 18th, Todd Bryant from Nor Nor Norwalk Preservation Trust, he's the president, he'll be giving a little historic background with slides to get the community involved. And, and Mike, did you really think it would be this much of a project when they took over the building? Well, um, not really. I mean, I mean, it's got quite a bit involved. And actually, I was just there the other day, and it's really amazing the, the, the level of work and the, and the due diligence that they're putting into the background restoration of the whole project overall. Uh, I think we were also all a little bit surprised at how long it took to pull the deal together. Mm. Yes. There was a, it was really a community effort to make this happen. Now, how do we contact you for those who may be interested in attending? Yes, um, well, we have a website. Uh, it's, uh, if you want to know more about it or donate, you don't have to attend. We'd welcome any <laughs> donations, of course. The website is 39westavenue.org, which is the address of the church. Uh, and then if you need to contact us, uh, 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 there is an email on that also, and there's my phone number, actually. My name and my phone number is on that. Maybe not my name, but if they need to contact, they can call the church or they can call me uh, that is on the website, and they can call the church, 203-853-6069. Well, it is or 6061, a excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful project. And you're right, the community needs to embrace it as well because yes. it is a landmark within the Norwalk community. Yes, yes. We want to thank you, Michael. We want to thank, thank you, you Jolene, for coming. I look forward to a great time on the 18th, 18th at yes. City Hall Community yes. Room. It's a free dinner. Free dinner uh, and silent RSVP, auction. Yes, and silent RSVP. auction, yes. All right, well, thank you both. Thank you. Right. And thank good you. luck with the project. Thank you very much. <laughs> and up next on our lives, minority female filmmakers from throughout the entertainment industry are coming together for the African American Women in Cinema Film Festival. Here's a preview. It's called a dream catcher, and they say that if you hang one over your bed, that all of the bad dreams will get caught in the web, and the good dreams will pass through the hole and to you. Do you believe it? I believe in dreams. Only on our lives, the founder and president of this one-of-a-kind film festival will be back in a moment. Okay. Who can give me an example of multiples? Ricardo. News 12. News 12? There are multiple ways to watch News 12. On your TV, laptop, iPad, or smartphone. Any way you want it, 24-7, even on weekends. Huh, multiplicity. I like it. Next you're gonna tell me they're as local as local news gets. Uh, yeah. News 12, as local as local news gets, only on Optimum. Can I have it back now? And thanks for making our lives a part of your weekend. I'm Gwen Edwards. It is one of the largest female film events in the nation, and some extraordinary women filmmakers are coming together for this event. It is November 19th through November 22nd in New York. Here's a preview. The Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation and Red Horse Native Productions present a film for anyone who's ever followed their dreams. Naturally Native. 
This is just one of the many films that will be showcased at the film festival. Let's meet the woman behind this event. Tara Renee is the founder and president of the African American Women in Cinema Organization Incorporated. Welcome and thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Now you feature the work of women mm -hmm. who are from the African, mm -hmm. the Latino, the mm -hmm. Asian, the Native American mm -hmm. diaspora. That's correct, that's correct. Very important. And the feeling you get seeing these women bring their work. Fulfilling, <laughs> very important and fulfilling. And we are honored to provide a platform for these talented women to showcase their work to the world. It is an honor. Now we have some video. Mm -hmm. This is your 17th annual film festival and it's mm -hmm. coming up a little later this month. Mm -hmm. Tell us when it is and where it is. Sure, in New York City, primarily in Manhattan. Uh, November again, 19th through the 22nd. We will be, uh, on the 19th, we'll be having our opening night further downtown in Manhattan. And then the next couple of days will be in Harlem. And then the last day, our international day, celebrating foreign women filmmakers will take place at the United Nations. That is in beautiful. <laughs> and, and what is the mission of your organization? Basically to highlight and bring awareness of women of color, uh, talented fil female filmmakers. So that is our goal. And do you have to be a member of the industry to attend? Not at all. Uh, we welcome everyone, film buffs, people who like film, people who are curious, they, they can come. <laughs> and how to get more information about this exceptional event? <laughs> Thank you. On our website, which is www.a as in African, a as in American, w as in women, i as in N C as in cinema dot org. <laughs> now, tell us some of the uh, the genres that mm -hmm. we'll be seeing in terms of the films that will be featured this year. Well, I'm very pleased to talk about our opening night film, which is called Seasons of Love, starring Gladys Knight and Taraji P. Henson, uh, Latoya Luckett, for formerly from Destiny's Child, as well as Method Man. And it deals with the interracial couple and what the family goes through, through throughout the holiday season. Very interesting. And the other uniqueness about this film is that it's been written, directed, and produced all by African-American women. Taraji P. Henson served as the executive producer on this project. The other projects that we have going on, uh, we have Hate Crimes in the Heartland, which is very interesting as well. It deals with the whole 1920 Oklahoma riots. Mm. And 90 years to the date, there was a, another unfortunate incident where several white people decided that they wanted to just start randomly killing black people. And the filmmaker did a wonderful and I think well-balanced job in documenting that and showing the justice and how the, the, the state came together and really dealt with it. So we have a lot of, lot of rich Also one that films. looks at how black men are portrayed. Exactly, afraid of dark which is so timely with the uh, situation that happened in Ferguson with Michael Brown and also in Staten Island. So it shows a unique perspective as how the media are portraying black men. So we have some very educational, eye-opening, insightful films that I think would be powerful and it certainly be a pleasure to witness during the film festival. Well, we're going to take a break, but you <laughs> okay. stay where you are. And when we come back with more of our lives, our conversation continues with Tara as we take a look at these talented women coming together for the African American Women in Cinema Film Festival. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Leadership, integrity, and dedication. These are the qualities that make up the News 12 Connecticut Scholar Athlete. Every Monday evening, News 12 showcases those students in southwestern Connecticut who demonstrate excellence in the classroom, on the athletic field, and in their communities. Meet our Scholar Athletes every Monday on News 12 Connecticut, as local as local news gets. Scholar Athlete is brought to you in part by the Connecticut Lottery. Now, being a filmmaker or a film director really sounds glamorous, right? 
Honey, it's a tough business. Some of the best up-and-coming minority women filmmakers are coming together for the African American Women in Cinema Film Festival. Tara Renee is the founder and the president of this organization. And Tara, first of all, we thank you so much for coming. But tell us, where did you study filmmaking? Actually, I took a couple courses at NYU and also School of Visual Arts. And there at School of Visual Arts, I met a young Vietnamese guy who took me around to several of his friends who were already shooting short films. And it really piqued my interest. And I began to help out and start gaining credit and also education. <laughs> and what advice would you have for someone who is interested in filmmaking? Certainly study. It's uh, a lot of information that you need to know in terms of how to get from point A to point B. It's a lot of material out there. Thank God for Google. You can certainly start Googling a lot of information. And that's basically where I would start. Uh, certainly there are schools that offer different types of courses and they have synopsis of the courses that sir, should pique your interest and uh, go for it there. But the bottom line mm -hmm. is you're telling a story mm -hmm. and true. you have to be a storyteller. That's definitely true. Or if you're not, you bring someone who can <laughs> <laughs> and produce them. <laughs> now, some of the events that are planned during the film festival itself. So we have keynote panels on industry, uh, prominent industry topics. One that's very, very uh, strong and already getting a lot of publicity, a young lady who made a feature film for $10,000, wow. which is unheard of. Yes. So she's going to talk about that and talk about the ins and outs, the ups and downs. So that's very, very uh, crucial. Then we're going to have another keynote panel on female documentary filmmakers. They're going to talk about why they came up to the subject matter that they wanted to take their time to document and put together uh, and let us you know, get some uh, insight on some of their work. And we also have uh, how to get your kids in show business. Very, very interesting. We wanted to reach back to the next generation, but we wanted to talk to their parents or mm -hmm. their guardians to find out their take on it as well. I understand you do a lot of work with the UN and UNESCO. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> we recently came back from Africa where I showcase had the opportunity to screen 12 Years a Slave. Mm. Very interesting to me. Uh, the youth in the audience really it was extremely educational for them. They did not realize the level of trauma that took place. And so I was very happy to be able to screen that. So we get to take mission trips and educate those around the world. <laughs> How to get more information if someone heard uh, about the event itself, sure. one of the uh, seminars, uh, workshops that are going to be yes. presented. How to get more information about it? They can go to our website, which is www.aawic.org. And there is a whole program schedule and all the information as to how they can attend. And understand that you're, you're in more than one city. It's not just in New York. That's correct. So we're in Atlanta and we're also in Florida. So we're, we're moving upward and onward. <laughs> well, it is a wonderful event, Tara. We thank, thank you so much for coming to share this with thank you. us here on our lives. And uh, we're looking forward to number 18. <laughs> <laughs> I know you just want to get through this. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But thank you. And thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And we want to thank you for watching and make sure that you like me on Facebook and that you follow me on Twitter for updates on the Our Live show.